Welcome to Northeastern Ohio and Borman Township. Borman Township was developed in 1805 but founded in the late 1780s by Elijah Borman, who you'll see shortly. Their picture was a flyover of the Borman area. The Borman Strip Mall here pictured here was built in 1950, Borman Plaza. The original Borman Plaza sign was mounted here. Here's one of the mount points, which is located just slightly under where the sign that I showed you is located. Let the walk begin. Here's a picture of Route 224 looking east, if you will. Borman was founded, as I mentioned earlier, in the late 1780s by Elijah Borman. Elijah was a senator out of the state of Connecticut. Um, Connecticut owned a lot of the Western Reserve territory where Youngstown and Borman and all his community is. Borman, as I mentioned earlier, was established in 1805 as a community. Here you're seeing I'm panning down the Borman Plaza, one of the first, the first, I should say, major retailing um, venture, if you will, I was um, developed by this man here, Edward J. DeBarlow. His corporation building was located on Route 7 or further up Market Street. I'm continuing to walk the strip, heading an easterly direction towards Poland, Ohio, as pictured here again. There are a lot of businesses that make their home here. There is a picture of Tassone Boot and Repair Shop there. There used to be a, a Denny's, the red uh, roof building there. And this was the former Pier 1 building. They got a lot of uh, furniture there through the years. I'm um, coming soon. There's a lot of ventures that go on in Boardman. Boardman is um, well, well developed, I should say. Um, a lot of buildings are actually torn down and different buildings built into place. But there's always developing going on in this fair community for well over 70 plus years. This is the home of the original Arby's. That building still stands. Arby's came online July 23rd, 1964. The Raffle Brothers, who owned a, a restaurant equipment company in Youngstown, came to town and set up a, a shop, if you will. Opened July 23rd, 1964. Leroy to the left and uh, Forrest to the right. Leroy Forrest Raffle, RB, the Raffle Brothers. Uh, right there you can see again that Conestega wagon design. Arby's was big enough in the entrance in there to where you could sit down and eat your meal, which was dramatically different from a lot of restaurants. The bicycle shop there, I like to claim it as my own because I used to take my bike there a lot. As the boardman's uh, bus drivers are out transporting our kids home from school as this is a little bit past the 4 o'clock p.m. hour. Uh, here's a picture of St. Charles church that sits on the hill as I call it as I'm marching in an easterly direction another factoid about Arby's Arby's uh, was one of the first restaurants as I mentioned that um, had an actual eating or dining area also you could eat out on the patio or in your car which was dramatically different here's a picture of Boardman's finest the Boardman fire department headed to a call Jay's Famous Hot Dogs was founded in downtown Youngstown. Uh, Borman is considered to be a sister community to Youngstown because we are like brother and sister. We're in each other's living room, I call it, every um, other hour, every other day. Jay's Famous Hot Dogs. The WTA, RTA, the Western Reserve Transit Authorities, zooming about. Uh, WRTA keeps us connected. Back in uh, the pre days before I got my automobile, I used to be on that bus quite often. Uh, this is the new Arby's, the one I call it two times removed. You had the original one, which had the Conestaga roof design. It's down the street. That's a wild bird unlimited these days. And you had another one built again, and it was renovated a couple times and then torn down, and then this one built. So I like to call this the third uh, generation. Here we're taking a look back in time if you will on the strip here before Arby's there was a McDonald's McDonald's was actually on the opposite side right there I'm showing a picture of the lot where the original McDonald's set it's set right next to a um, Ohio gas station to be exact and now it lies on the opposite side of the road right next to what used to be a Pontiac dealership Jim Pace Pontiac and other 
Um, dealerships were in that space for a lot of years now. There's a CVS there. And a lot of people know that it was an electronic store called Circuit City for a while as well. And we go up to the corner where Walgreens was. As you can imagine, every building you see here has been replaced through the years. Uh, Boardman is one of those communities that's always in transition. Right now, I'm spinning around looking at Route 7 right there, Route 224, and I'm going to look back south as we're looking towards Youngstown as the cars are peeling off from the Youngstown um, coming north and on the Route 224 headed east. Down the strip, the strip is vast, you'll find a whole other shopping community down on that end. Here's a plethora of different architectural styles I wanted you to take a look at. Right here is a BJ's uh, restaurant to be exact. There was another restaurant there prior called Cheddar's. As I mentioned before, Borman is always developing. Here's a picture of the Southern Park Mall, which is celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Um, you can look there. Southern Park Mall was named after a popular horse racing facility back in the day called Southern Park. I'm looking on down the strip there, and that's the direction I'm headed as I'm headed towards the Boardman Park, if you will, Boardman Township Park. The Southern Park Mall came online in 1970, and here it is this many years later, still trucking along. This is kind of like what I call the backside of the mall. If you look straight ahead, you'll see a former Dillard's was housed there. The building is used for a lot of different things. Here, pictured is a picture of St. James Episcopal Church. They used to occupy the space where Chili's is. Right there, right there, way back in the day. I was sitting in the car as a child, and my mother went in the mall, left me in the car, and I actually saw the church uh, put up onto a flat bed of a, a special truck. There are motorcycles uh, enjoying the fine weather, so this is a 74 degree day in Boardman. Um, I saw it transported on up Route 224. For years, I didn't know where, it, where they put it down at or if it was staying in the um, township, to be exact, but it was transported if you will, and that would have been 1972. A year before that, the church had moved its congregation onto Glenwood Avenue, 7640 to be exact. Here's a picture of a lot of businesses, if you will. Um, there we go. Oh yeah, I believe there's gas wars going on within the community. You have a sheets on one side. There used to be a former uh, fire station near along with a monument place that occupied that space. And I'm paying tribute to fire station number one. And here's a picture of the railroad tracks that used to be bring the train loads of people from Youngstown out to here to where they can go to the Southern Park Racing Facility. Remember, that was the line right there that brought the people out to Borman back in the day. Borman was like an escape from the smog and, if you will, dirty air of the um, heavily latent steel industry that was going on in the Youngstown community back then. Um, Borman represented an escape. We're entering the Yellow Creek watershed here as you're looking at the um, shops at Borman Park. And a lot of plazas going on down the strip as we continue to go towards Poland. Uh, Walmart and um, Gabriel Brothers, or Gabe's they call it now, are a lot of um, stores to occupy the retail space going down there. But this strip cascades far and long. Definitely one of the major uh, retailing hubs within the Tri-County community. Welcome to Boardman Township Park, the Green Oasis. I um, made this here in tribute to William W. Boardman, son of Elijah Boardman. He is the one that supplied the land and uh, the money to have this church built. In the beginning, it didn't have the steeple um, nor the belfry and it didn't have the stained glass windows and stuff. A lot of people say it was a meeting hall in the beginning, and then it transitioned into a church, and now it transitioned back to a meeting hall. If you're a Boardman resident, you know the story 100%. But a very, very lovely edifice that occupies a, a grand space of honor if you come into the park, is immediately to the right. Um, there again, it was built in 1827, making this church over 194 years old. Um, I was really surprised that it survived the train, uh, the truck transport up to its, um, hopefully its final resting place, so to speak, that they keep it up through the years. Uh, it was placed on the uh, National Register of Historic Places 
in 1977, I believe, that date. And you saw the historical placard. If you stopped the video, you could be able to read it. I'm going around and showing off the old English architecture of this grand, grand building there again, which was um, left to us, I would say, by uh, William Boardman. It was his monies and his insight as he was an Episcopalian uh, to have this church built. Grand structure. I'm showing every bit of it. If you look up the, the English design, and every bit of this um, has symbolism in the design qualities. If you're looking up towards the apex up there, towards the roof line, you can see what I'm talking about. Here again, paying tribute to Edward J. DeBartolo, also, who was a developer who came to this fair community from the city of Youngstown, who would develop a lot of properties and a lot of uh, land around the community. Of course, his chief. Um, acquisition, if you will, within our community is the Southern Park Mall, um, and his son and him in partnership would purchase the San Francisco 49ers, in which the family still own 90% of the team to this very day. I would like to salute the DeBarlow family as a whole, from Eddie to his sister Denise. And the DeBarlow's became a very um, important family within the community, and they are continue to serve as an important community. Um, do in the area of philanthropy, etc. My hat's off to the DeBarlow's, uh, which held out of Youngstown, originally Smoky Hollow, as I mentioned, and Princeton Avenue, and then transversed out to um, the township of Boardman. I uh, look at this grand architecture as I continue to go on 360 all the way around here. I want to make sure I get every bit of it, and I don't want to leave anything out here and that. And I want to pay tribute also to people, notables, if you will, that grew up in our community, this community. Um, Bernie Kozar, John Greco, uh, Maureen McGovern, Elizabeth Harton, Hartman, to be exact, and Mary Ellen Kay. Um, those two were actresses. Maureen McGovern was a singer and a Broadway performer, as we know. Bernie Kozar played for a uh, quarterback for Cleveland Browns, so he was football. And John Greco was an offensive guard for the Cleveland Browns as well. And hats off to um, those Boardman natives, if you will. Um, a year before the church was uh, relocated, um, the congregation rather was re relocated to 7640 Glenwood Avenue. And this is um, St. James Episcopal Church as it is today in the congregation. And it goes on. Um, this church was developed I think, in 1809, so the congregation was formed then. Goes way back. Uh, Borman Township houses the police department and other governmental offices as well. It's a very, very grand structure. Wish I could have given you a much better picture than that. Uh, Borman continues to be a major retailing hub. On the other side of the county, as I call it, is on the city of Niles, Ohio. You will find the Eastwood Mall, and that would be the 422 corridor. Um, Speedway is coming here, as you see, and on down the way, looking in that direction. Um, a brand new Myers is almost ready to be open. I believe it's open in uh, mid May. Um, a tribute to Edward J. DeBartolo Sr. I'm Joseph Napier Sr., creator of this video short that pays tribute to the township of Boardman, Ohio, and um, Elijah Boardman. I thank you for coming along with me on this short journey.